we're going to look at something here. Because, you know, one of the struggles is, had I not planted that little field, and I look back today and said, boy, I really wished I'd get out of that. It'd just be a field of weeds right now. But because I was diligent in that. So take the time to find the important things. Take the time and find those important things in your life and begin to say, 14 years from now, I want to be able to say, praise the Lord, I'm glad I did that. Where I mean, I, I can honestly say, and I'm not saying this just because I'm their dad, but what a joy it is to settle somebody into university or see Carly and Brendan getting married and see their lives growing up in the Lord and knowing. I mean, I don't go to bed at night going, oh boy, I hope they're not carrying on bad when they're out. I trust my kids. I love them. I know what's in them. I know what's in their heart. I know that as they have thought in their heart all along, so they are. So you need to think the same thing in your life, that as you are in your life, all along what you're thinking, so you are in your actions. And then, of course, you get to me being a bit of a clown, and I go, okay, well, what about your actions? Well, you know, you can always arrest those thoughts and go, okay, that's, you know, do this, don't do that. I, I struggle with that all the time. But nevertheless, this is the word here, and so we're looking at that. Now, Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 14 to 15 we're going to go to verse 13, actually, for just a minute here. And the word that God has here is called Belperazim, which means the God of the breakthrough. How many know you need a breakthrough? Amen. 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 You need a breakthrough. How many know there's nothing ref more refreshing than when you have finally said, hey, wow, I got some breakthrough. It's just like that wonderful breath of fresh air. And he said to them, do you not understand the parable? And how will you not understand all parables? That the sower sows the word... And these are the ones by the wayside which is sown. They're sown, and when it's sown, they hear, and Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown into their heart. So your heart is the soil, just like Hannah and I planted that little crop. We put some oats in there and some, some uh, hay seed and grass seed, and we sowed that crop. And, uh, and, and so as we sowed that crop and, and we sowed the word into our hearts, eventually a crop came. But we see here... That Satan comes immediately to take away the word. How, how quick is immediate? Doesn't get much quicker than that, does it? Immediate's pretty darn fast. Immediate, right? Immediate. It's, it's right there. Boom. You could have a breakthrough. You could be praying in the Spirit. You could be connecting with the Lord. And you could see your breakthrough right on the horizon. Just about the time you close one eyelid, the enemy's got a picture bigger than life. Saying, I don't know. I don't know. Don't bother Jesus anymore. Your child has died. That's what they said to the ruler of the synagogue. And Jesus said, stop the fear, only believe. I talked a few weeks back uh, and where the word said, let this mind be in you. You have to let this mind be in you. When I, I grew up, not grew up, but we spent some time when I was little or younger, I guess I was about 12, we moved to Utah. And I'll never forget on my way walking to school, uh, it was Salt Lake City and you'd enjoy the mountains and all that. But they had these, these water courses. And that was, I guess, their irrigation or their drain systems or however they worked. I didn't even know I was little. But I remember that, that you could, I was always amazed that they have these dams and they have these big crank wheels. And they at times would let the water through. Or there was times when they would dam it up and shut it off. And so I remember as a kid walking there and seeing that and, and trying to figure out how that worked. I was just young. But I always was amazed that that's how they ran their water system. And so they would have these, these dams and the water looked pretty neat on the other side. And sometimes it would go over and sometimes they were way dammed up. And if it was really dry, the water level would be way low. But when they wanted the water to flow, they would have to let the water. There's a situation in your life when you want to see your breakthrough, when you want to see your healing, when you want to see something change in your life, you've got to begin to say, I'm going to let this mind be in me. The mind that says, the word says that, you know, if you would, it's not suggesting that you're equal with God and such that you're better, but God wants you to have the attributes that Jesus did. He didn't walk around the earth full of fear and anxiety and failure and sickness and disease and being broke. He's saying, let this mind be in you. Open up your life so that God can begin to flow through you. So we see here that immediately Satan comes to steal the word that was in the heart. And these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. And when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. Okay? Take, you ever met somebody like that? You, you know, you have a cup of coffee, you're supercharged, you're good to go. 
They're gliding about six hours later. It's like you never even talked. Well, you've got to begin to let the Word of God flush your mind. The Word says it will actually cleanse your mind with the washing of water by the Word. And so then we talk about the stony ground. They receive it with gladness. Then the, the verse 17, they have no root in themselves. They endure for a time. Then tribulation and persecution comes for the Word's sake. Understand this. If there was one key that you got out of today's sermon, is tribulation and persecution comes for the Word's sake. Not for your sake. It comes to take the Word out of you, then it affects you. Because if Satan can take the Word... He can stop you. If the ruler of the synagogue had been overcome by fear when he's in the middle of seeing Jesus, this woman with the issue of blood, she got healed and set free, and the freedom was there, and he's all excited going, man, if he'll, if he'll do that for her, even though she butted in line, he kept his heart right. True story, read it. And, and good thing sand wasn't back in those days. But anyway, um, so he, <laughs> she butted in line, and, and uh, we were going through the drive through the other day. i got to tell you this. And so I purposely let somebody else go through just because we're learning patience. Okay? So, the one with the issue of blood got blessed. And the ruler of the synagogue is on his way and everyone's going, don't bug Jesus anymore because your daughter has died. And Jesus didn't stop. Notice he didn't stop at the word. He didn't stop at what they were saying. He said, stop the fear. Only believe. So you've got to stop that. You've got to stop that. Just like that gate in Salt Lake City, that gate where they let the water through. If they didn't want the water to go through, they tighten that gate up. So you've got to guard your ear gate. You've got to guard your eye gate. You've got to guard your mouth gate, right? You've been given two ears and one tongue. You've got to watch what's coming out of your mouth, right? And, and, and so it's interesting sort of in going through some of the things that I'm learning and, and, and my wife and others around can contest or not contest, but can testify, sorry. But when you begin to have, um, I struggle sometimes with obsessional thoughts. It doesn't mean you're weird or horrible, but it can mean that something just goes around and around like a, a squirrel in a cage. And here's the deal. If you want to know a quick little psychiatrist antidote here, if you feed that, you feel good for about 10 minutes. It's like a high. If somebody reassures you and says, this or that, your head hears that, your heart feels at rest for about 10 minutes, and then after 10 minutes later, you actually feel worse because you're reinforcing a negative thought, okay? I'm not trying to be weird with you, but it actually is true because I've been through it. I'm go I've gone through it. Praise the Lord, we're on the tail end of it. But you can have these thoughts that come in, whether it's fear or failure or sickness or did God really say, aren't those things that the enemy does? Did God really say... Does it really work? Is faith really real? Is Jesus really real? I'm not struggling with that. Don't worry. But you can get in those thoughts, and those thoughts can begin to be like a, a squirrel going round and round and round and round and round. And if you tag enough people and go, what about this and what about that? You kind of go, oh, okay, I'm all right. And by the time you hit the door to the parking lot, the enemy will come there, and he will steal the word out of your heart, and he will say, did God really say? And you'll actually feel worse. So... You cannot let those thoughts come in. You've got to just crank that wheel tight. You've got to get those boards built up so that the water does not even flow over the dam. If it's the wrong kind of water, you don't want that. Amen? And so you want to begin to think the thoughts that God has. So we're getting to the punchline here. Verse 19, it says, The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in. Choke the word. Entering in, choke the word. I preached a sermon there a few years back about, uh, remember the, if you'll remember those chocolate chip muffins. I remember Elizabeth was here and we, she was actually the one that gave me the analogy and talking about how the chocolate chip muffins can look so good. But after you're taking a bite or two and she says, but there was just a little touch of dog poo in there. You'd never notice it, but you'd, just, you'd never notice it, but it is in there. It was in the mix. Wouldn't matter how good they looked, you would not eat them. Well, that's a pretty, uh, you know, I know that's a, a, a crass analogy, but the word here says, the things that enter in choke the word out. Verse 19, the desires for other things entering in. Entering in. You say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? 
What do you mean by that? Don't let things contaminate you. They say uh, like one liter of oil can contaminate an entire uh, ship load of water that the people would drink. One little liter of oil, it's probably even less than that, could contamin th contaminate thousands and thousands of gallons. So it shows that when you let things enter in, it will contaminate your faith, it will contaminate your mind, it will contaminate your being. So just like that little dam that I saw as a kid, they did not let those things enter in. If they were to be shut off, they were shut off. And so you've got, now there's the, there's, there's the battle right there. The battlefield is in the mind. Your mind is going, well, I don't know. Your mind is going, well, it you know, feels good to think about that. It feels good. The problem is, as you think along, all along in your heart, so you become. So it doesn't feel dangerous at first. Until you think about it over and over and over and over and over again. And then as you are all along in your heart, that actually becomes you. And that's the danger there. And so we see here, the things entering in. That's what I got out of that Charles Caps brochure. The things that enter in choke the word out. So you say, well, what does that mean? Well, we need to, uh, and, and I would be the first to say, it's difficult at times. To take that time to allow the Lord. I was reading a good article from Gloria Copeland last night, talking about how when she had committed, when they were first going to ORU and uh, 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 studying the Word, that she was going to literally really begin to dive into certain things in the Word of God and in her time of prayer. And in her mind, it said, there's no way. You do not have time to do that with all that you have going on. And don't we all struggle with that? Or at least I do. Okay? I think I'm telling on everybody too. But anyway... And she said when she started to put the word first, she had all kinds of time to get stuff done. It was kind of cool. And it wasn't any time after I got, you know, and I got done reading that article and suddenly I had all this energy to go and get stuff done. The kids last night were like, Dad, what are you doing? And I was just, just doing stuff that I had been putting off for a long time. Well, the Lord is like that. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And so he'll make that your day goes longer or maybe your doctor's appointment rather than you sitting there for four hours. You know, the Lord says, you know what? I know they're going to get back to some prayer when they get home. And so we're going to have a 15-minute doctor appointment or whatever it is. And begin as you begin to sow as you are all along in your heart, so you will be. And when you begin to sow into that area, you will get great things. So, excuse me. The tribulation will still come. The persecution will still come. But in verse 19, you cannot let it enter. You ever been around somebody that just wants to start ta talking trash to you? You ever been around, well, let me tell you what other people are saying about you. Or let me tell you what the world thinks about you. Or let me tell you this. Or let me tell you that. You have to stop them. You can be kind. But that does no good to feed your head full of that. Right? You ever been somewhere and you had to know what everyone's saying about you? Don't need to know that. There's probably saying some stuff that ain't so great. But all that's going to do is enter in and choke. Enter in and choke. And you don't want to do that. You want to fill your mind through what God says about you. And I know preaching this is easy to preach. It's a whole lot harder to live it because we're all human beings. We have flesh. We care. We feel. But... The, the great men and women of God would say it doesn't matter what the world thinks of you, it matters what God thinks of you. Mm -hmm. and the good